Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete and this is vlog number 19. I haven't made a vlog in quite a while. I have a lot of things to cover. First of all, I'd like to say hello to Joe out in Bridgeport, Connecticut. He's 100 years old. He's a retired machinist and he still watch, is interested in machine shop and he watches my video. So, have a good day, Joe. You know, I just had a video <clears throat> on making a square hole. And it almost went viral, at least it's viral for me, um, like a half million views. So, I don't know what makes a video like that go semi-viral. Because the people that watch it really aren't my subscribers, so we don't know what happens. But anyway, it was kind of controversial. Some people loved the idea, others said, well you're cheating, that's not a square hole, why don't you get a brooch? Well, the reason I don't want to get a brooch is they're $150, and actually the project that I'm going to use this in coming up requires four different square holes of different sizes, so I would need four brooches or $600 worth. And instead, you know what I did? I bought a box of square holes. Let me give you a close-up on that. If you haven't seen that video, it's my tips number 705 called How to Machine a Square Hole. Check it out! And yes, you can buy square holes, and I did, and here's proof. And they're made by an outfit in Wisconsin called Green Bay Manufacturing. They also sell these sleeves, they're called sleeves, with hexagon holes and with rectangular holes. So someone uh, told me about this in a comment, and thank you for it. So, you know, ch ch check it out. There's a 3 8 hole square, and I don't know what, I think that's 5 8 on the outside. And of course they've been broached, and they're fairly long. You know, you can't drill a long, deep, square hole. You can drill a rather shallow hole with special expensive equipment. And here's one in quarter. So you'll be seeing these in a future video. I hope you find that interesting. I was amazed. I, I had no idea that these were available in many, many different sizes. And they're made of 12L14 steel. Alright, let's move on to something else. I beat that to death. Thank you to Earl Sand up in Amboy, Illinois for sending me some Sheldon literature. I used to have Sheldon machines at the high school, and this is totally familiar to me. This is the parts list for the 11 inch Sheldon lathe. We had four of those at the high school. They were very good lathes, although they were beat to death. When I got there in 67, I had to rebuild every one of the quick change gearboxes. I talked about this website before called My Heap. And Joe has put uh, my project page on there, so there's was nine projects, now there's a tenth one on. And check it out, it is for this little Atlas carriage stop. Maybe I talked about this before, I'm, I'm not sure. That's several years old, but Kevin had made these beautiful drawings for me. He lives in New York some time ago, so the drawings along with links to the videos are now on my heap. So when you go to the bottom of the page there on my heap, you will come to this area, and if you click on either one of these, you'll go to the videos, and if you click on the PDF, the drawing will come up and you can print it off if you have a notion. And that goes for all ten projects that are on that web page. Thanks, Joe. In previous videos, I talked about Fred Berg. He was the genius that started the Bergmaster company. They made turret-type drill presses and lots of them, a wonderful product. And uh, then the company went belly up because of bad management. They were a conglomerate and all of that nasty stuff. But anyway, Fred Berg had over 90 patents. And once the company was more or less dissolved and he lost interest in it, he patented and developed and marketed this, what he called a world clock. And that's long before 
digital stuff so it's all mechanical and will tell you the time all over the world also and th these items came from either his son's or grandson's uh, house this is apparently an ashtray that was a promotional item but notice that it is in the shape of the turret drill press so I thought that was awesome thank you I talk a lot about the Star Rock murders, and this is Chester Weger, the so-called murderer. Some still say he's innocent, but he has now been released from prison after about 50 years, and uh, is telling his story. And uh, remember, he was in my graduating class, but he didn't graduate, and he was the dishwasher at Star Rock Lodge. I don't know why I'm telling you this, because it was headlines, I guess, and I had talked about making a video about the Star of Rock murders. There is a HBO movie coming out on that. It's an interesting story, and here he is as a young man down in St. Louis Canyon. I've been there many, many times, and he is with the detectives and the sheriff demonstrating what he did do or didn't do. I don't remember. I did see many horrible bloody photos at the News Tribune back in the 60s. File photos, you know, 8 by 10. I don't think they were ever printed because they were too gruesome. They kind of horrified me as a teenager. But we knew somebody that worked there, you know, and they showed us those pictures in a file cabinet. Probably wasn't supposed to do that. But as long as I'm talking about this, uh, these old things. I talked about the Radium Girls too. That movie, Radium Girls, is now out and it's on Netflix. I haven't watched it yet. I hope to get to it this week. As long as I'm showing newspaper clippings, this uh, page out of the Wall Street Journal in January 2021 was sent to me by Tom Nugent. Not Ted Nugent, Tom. And <laughs> because I had been talking about digital assets. So here's a full page article about digital assets and the value of them and what to do about them because I was talking about the fact that I do have digital assets, namely these YouTube videos including the one that you're now watching or not watching. I often talk about my brother Jan. Well in the alumni bulletin of IVCC where he taught I should say IVCC Foundation report. There was a tribute to him, and I think I told you that, that there was a very large donation scholarship uh, given in his name. And this is a very old picture of him, probably 30 or 40 years old. He was a character, he was a man of a thousand faces, he could impersonate facially and with his voice, he could do Donald Duck, he could do all the Mel Blanc stuff, because he was just so creative, and I miss him. He was an artist and a sculptor. I have shown you, this is really the only one I have. Actually, it's my sister's. But that's the kind of work that he did, usually in a much larger scale than this. I cannot draw a stick figure, but he was an artist. This is a bronze, not cold cast plastic. You know, I just hate that when they say cold cast bronze. It's not cold cast bronze. It's plastic with some bronze dust in it. I get so wound up, don't I? Did you watch my video a week or two ago where I made these serrations on the Bridgeport Mill and I had the head tilted? And uh, many people brought it up and said, uh, I bet you always told us you'd rather take a beating than tilt the head. And I totally agree. And I haven't trammed it yet. I just read that. I'm going to do some videos on that. But someone also brought up, speaking of my brother, he said, wasn't it your brother that said that he would rather die than tilt the head on his bridge port? Do you remember a long, long time ago I made a video on how to mill this knee crank adapter for the Bridgeport mill so that you could raise and lower the knee under power, typically with a DeWalt 
type drill. A lot of people watched that video. That's quite a while ago. And then someone sent me a printed one. And that works quite well too. Being driven either by this hexagon or a large socket. I forgot to put his name on that. But more recently, Mike sent me this also to do the same job. And this is 3D printed with stainless steel. This is metal. It is quite heavy. It is quite durable. And uh, thank you so much, Mike. Look at that. And it, it mates with this. This is just a sample piece to show how nicely it fits. And it was done on a Mark Forged printer. So it is printed out and then it's cleaned by a certain process, that, which takes a long time, I guess, and then fired so that it's solid. Because it starts out, I guess, with powder. But isn't that awesome? Made of metal. Because you know what it took me to machine this. And look at the detail. I think that is so awesome. Let's step over to the bridge port. So here it is. Pretty awesome. Thank you, Mike. I learned a new word last week. It's a Japanese word. I guess it's pronounced Sundoku. And of all places to hear this, I heard it on Jeopardy. And the now dead host, Alex Trebek, was talking to a guest. And uh, he said he had this condition, which is acquiring reading materials, but letting them pile up in one's home without reading them. In other words, owning way more books than you could ever read in your lifetime and Alex Trebek himself confessed to having this condition and of course with him and this is kind of ironic he only lived one month after he said that so one book would have been uh, a lifetime supply for him but I have hundreds and hundreds of books maybe perhaps a thousand plus magazines and things and I there's no way I will ever be able to read them all I'm reading less and less because of my eyesight. But that's what I have. Maybe some of you do. But I have been in some people's homes where they do not have a bookcase. No need, because they have no books. Thank you to an anonymous person. I still don't know who it is that sent me this book, Advanced Pattern Making, which is a Lindsay reprint. Some interesting information in here about foundry patterns. Not too long ago I was talking about patents. I guess I'm always talking about patents, but here is a design patent that my son Eric has. He works for Chamberlain. They make garage door openers for Sears and all kinds of different companies, but uh, he's got a bunch of patents and I see he's a, just the co-author of this. But he's got some other ones, and I don't know if they're all design patents or not. But this particular one is basically, strictly, a garage door opener, transmitter, remote control, I guess. Well, just a couple thoughts to finish up here, and then some extra credit. Everybody keeps telling me, forget YouTube, abandon YouTube, and put your videos on Rumble. So I'm experimenting with that. I see that some of the other creators are doing the same, namely Keith Fenner and uh, Randy Richard in the shop. But I put two videos on and nothing happened and nothing happened. And so I finally emailed them because it says in Rumble, videos have not been approved. So I emailed them and they said, well, it takes two or three weeks. Well, it's been three weeks. I don't really care, I'm just ranting about this, but if they want this platform to grow, why aren't the videos on there instantly, like on uh, YouTube? You put them on and they're on. I mean, they're no waiting around for approval or anything like that. But, um, and supposedly it's a better platform that doesn't censor you. And that brings me up to my next point here. 
censorship, so this is extra credit. I actually do not want you to watch this. Turn it off. A month ago or so, I talked about being censored. Now, I've never actually been censored by YouTube. Many people have. And I guess that's going on with Facebook and a lot of different platforms now. But the reason I'm talking about this is I told you that I was forced to take a video down off of YouTube, a nine-year-old one, and two others too, which I don't want to talk about. But, uh, and somebody said, oh no, you, you were scammed. You, you were pranked. Nobody actually told you to do that. Yes, they did. It was a police detective from a police department, and I'm not going to tell you where or why. I'm not even telling you what video was taken off, and it was no big deal because it was languishing anyway. It had, after nine years, it had 8,000 views. It was a total waste of time, but it was all about, uh, well, we are being censored. I was forced to take that down, or actually what he said is, uh, he asked me, it was very nice, please take it down, remove it, and that'll save us having to come to your house. Well, I don't want him to come to my house, you know, because I've had the FBI here, not, I mean, when I was a boy, to my dad's house. I've had the IRS here in this house, right in this room here, as well as upstairs. That's about 30 years ago, but the IRS spent the day at my house terrorizing me, so I'm very leery and that, that's why you hear me badmouth the IRS and many other uh, agencies and bureaus because I don't like it. I don't like anything about it or them. Anyway, back to, back to this. It was all about terrorism or the possibility of terrorism, something that I showed in that video, which I don't want to talk about because they'll probably, they're probably listening to me now. I don't know. Okay, now I'm paranoid, you see. But uh, it was real. I don't know why people said you've been scammed or, you know, this, this actually did happen. And I did it, uh, will, you know, without, well, I'm complaining to you, but I, you know, I did take it down. And the reason I'm not telling you what the name of the video was and what the other videos are is because I am, in a way, protecting a man who was very good to me and helpful to me, and I don't want to get him in trouble. So that that's why I'm not telling you any more about that, and nor will I. And that'll be the end of this subject until something else bad happens <laughs> to me. <laughs> well, thank you for listening to me rant. This whole thing, of course, ran a lot longer than I wanted it to. So um, thanks for watching if you did, and be sure and watch my many other videos. I got a lot of videos coming out yet here this winter. Many of them already, I told you, in the can, just not released. So, all right, I'll see you next time. This is Mr. Pete Tubalcane saying so long for now.